so the next step in our process is to clean the data that we have just downloaded. So we're going to be doing that in Tableau Prep. And um, what we want to do is prepare the data that we've downloaded for use in uh, our visualization process. So we're going to need to do things to ensure that the data is consistent, usable, and accurate. Okay? The first thing that uh, I want to do is actually show you what um, a sample flow looks like. So this is the flow that comes with Tableau Prep uh, that actually shows you how the Superstore data and the World Indicators data, but the Superstore data comes to be in the in the state that you use it in. So when you were working with sample sample um, Superstore data that came with Tableau Desktop, um, it had been cleaned in this way. Okay, so let's take a look at it. I'm going to open it up. So Tableau Prep um, works in a kind of uh, like a flowchart fashion. Okay, so it starts over here on the left and it goes over to the right. And you start with your data sets that you might then add other data sets to. Okay? And it goes all the way through the different things that you do with it to these outputs. So this is an output in the flow. Um, this is your endpoint, um, and this is how you how that superstore data uh, that uh, that you work with is is created. So you click run flow, and it will generate um, uh, a sort of complete package of all of this data um, that you've already cleaned. Okay? So let's take a look at this. Uh, one of the nice things about this sample flow is that it allows you to see the kinds of cleaning activities that. Uh, that you may want to do on your data. So in the first case, these are the orders from the south part of the US. Here's the original data, okay? Uh, and it might look familiar to you. There's order ID, product name, ship date, et cetera, et cetera, okay? But this data set seemed to have some nulls in it. What is a null? A null is uh, a, an observation that has no data. It's sort of empty. Sometimes you won't know that you have nulls until you try to work with the data and you might see an indicator down in the lower right hand corner that says something about null values. So you want to figure out what you're going to do with those. This person decided to exclude them. So what they did was they went here and they went to um, clean filter and they looked for null values. Uh, <clears throat> and they looked to see if there were any null values in them. Now, there aren't any null values in here right now because it has been cleaned. Okay. So another thing you can do is correct the data type in your data. So here's the original data from the eastern part of the US in the Superstore data. And it originally was set up like this. Okay. Discount product name. Um, row ID as a number, region as, an, as, a, as a string, um, state as a string, etc. Um, ship date as a date, right? Order ID as a string, and so on. Now, if these uh, data are not correct, they're not in the right type, you might have difficulty down the road. So what this person has done to clean this data is um, they've uh, changed some of the types to correct them. So discount, right, was changed, some letters were removed, and uh, another type was changed. And notice that these are, this is sort of the history of that file, so you can remove those history elements, and I'm just going to do Command Z to undo my change. Um, so you can always make corrections. When you're cleaning your data, if you say need to change the data type, let's say the ship mode, um, you know, came in as a number. <laughs> for some reason, um, and it needs to be indicated as a string. Okay. You uh, click the data type indicator up here, and it will provide some options for you. And these are the data types that you can change your column data into. So for instance, the state, I wonder if we can change this to a geogra geographic data. And it looks like we can. 
So I'm going to turn this into um, geographic data. Okay? And now it should come in um, when we're in Tableau Desktop as geographic data. So there are other ways that you can clean this data. Um, if you take a look at any given column, there are these three dots here for that particular column of data. And if you click that, it will show you the options. So you can create a calculation to change the data in a specific way. You can clean the data in these kinds of ways, make it all uppercase or lowercase. Okay. Um, sometimes your data will have irregularities in this um, aspect, and that will make it harder to identify commonalities because capital H home office is not the same as lowercase home office. So if there's a, uh, you know, a matching set there, it won't re register uh, if, they're, you know, if they're not matching. So let's, um, let's get rid of that, though, because we don't, we don't need that. So I'm going to delete that change. But other changes you can make are grouping values. Um, so you could say, I want, I want all of these states here to be in this group, okay? or these ship modes to be in, in, a, in, a, in the same group. And that will allow you to do um, different things in Tableau, Tableau Desktop. You can split values. So if you bring in a lot of text data, for instance, um, you can split that data along various um, uh, markers in the data by spaces, or tabs, or commas, or whatever. So you can turn what is just, um, you know, a giant string into individual columns. So you can rename fields, you can copy and duplicate fields, you can remove everything except for this field, and, and so on. You can also hide things and remove columns, uh, which we may be doing in our um, data cleaning because um, some of the data that came in we don't need. Uh, and if you have too much data, that you're not using, especially if you're not using it, it just causes the um, desktop to be, uh, sorry, the, the dashboard to be a little slow. So uh, other things you can do are you can join data sets of the same kind of type and thing. So these are all orders, you notice, and uh, they're all orders from four different places in the US, regions in the US. So after the cleaning, which is this portion, right? Um, where the data has been sort of normalized, what this author has done is combined everything into one set of data called all orders. Okay? And they've done that by unioning the data, which I'll show you in hours if it comes to it. There are other things you can do, like joining data that is different. Okay? So this is a connection that's been made between the orders and the returns. And the return data might have different information in it. So this has return reason, product ID, order ID, return notes, and the approver. Okay? So it's been joined with the orders, which have these columns in it. When it was joined, um, the author had to identify which, you know, how do we want to join it. Okay? And this author has chosen uh, to do a right join. Um, and uh, that will keep all of the information that is on the quote unquote right side, as opposed to the left side of the data. So there's usually sort of a right side table and a left side table, and that's how Tableau indicates how you're joining them. Joins can be pretty complicated. Uh, unions are a little bit simpler. Joins can be a little bit complicated. Um, there are other things you can do here. Uh, one important one that you may encounter later is pivoting. So if we take a look at the original data, this quota data, there were field names including region and then 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018. Well, it would make more sense if 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018 were in a column called year instead of um, the data for the returns, for, sorry, the quota data, instead of that actually being in the particular year. So what this author has done is pivoted these columns and you can see that effect here. So the data has been pivoted um, into a year and then the data that's associated with each quota in that year is in a new column called quota. And that makes it easier to do say line graphs or timelines. You'll also notice that there is a final step 
in your flow. And if you click this, you'll see what the complete data is after it's been cleaned. Uh, so what this is being, uh, what we're going to end up doing with this is identifying how we want to export it. And that's what this little gray um, panel is doing over here. So we want to save the output um, to a file. Where are we going to save it? And what are we going to call it? Well, we're going to browse and we're going to figure out where we're going to save it to. Um, it defaults to data sources. Right? Uh, you give it a title up here. Um, I'm going to cancel this out. And uh, then it will tell you what you, you, you identify what type of output you want. You can send it to an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV. And there are different criteria for each of these. Tableau data extract, the hyper form is, um, you know, proprietary and tab Tableau specific, but it is a little bit more lightweight, um, works a little faster. And then you want to click run flow down here, which will, uh, which will create your output file, which then you can import into um, desktop and do your magic. So let's close this flow. You can also save your flows so that you can go back and work on them later just by you know, saving your flow or save steps as flow and so on. Um, so that's pretty useful. So let's close this though. And no, I don't wanna save my changes. And so now I'm back to my original um, Tableau prep file uh, space platform. So what I wanna do is connect to the data that I've just downloaded. Remember, we downloaded all of that data for our project on um, school assessments and um, uh, housing value, and we have that map data, hopefully, uh, that will show us where the schools are. Uh, and then we have a few other pieces of information like property addresses for all the homes and whatnot in um, Arlington, the, all of the addresses in Arlington that we'll be able to um, map. So I'm going to connect to the data. And you remember as well that it, we downloaded a, a variety of different data types. Okay, There was an Excel spreadsheet, there might have been a CSV spreadsheet, there were some text files, those weird pipe delimited text files, uh, and there was that strange KMZ file. That was our um, map information for the schools. So uh, let's go ahead and um, connect to our data. Uh, um, let's try the text files first because those um, might be a little bit complicated. I'm going to click text file. I'm going to navigate to where I saved all of my stuff, which I believe was on the desktop and dashboard data. Okay. Now you'll notice that the type of data that you selected will be highlighted. So importing a text table uh, we'll also capture CSV. So if you want to import a CSV spreadsheet, then you choose text. Okay. So it looks like we've got our property addresses from Arlington. We've got our set our final assessment data, and then we've got this other attest, uh, assessment .txt. Oh, I remember this was the assessment. Um, this is the house. This was the housing assessments. Um, I should have renamed that when I downloaded it uh, as so as not to be confused um, between that and the um, Department of Education assessments. So we have three text values. This is an old one. I'm going to move that to the trash. So we have three files that I want to import that are in this type. I'm just holding down the command key to select multiples. I'm going to open them. And uh, what Tableau Prep will do is pull your data in. Okay? These are all your individual tables. And it will immediately encourage you to view and clean your data. Okay. So we've got the property addresses, the housing value assessment, and the school assessment data. Okay. So I'm going to just take a peek at this because the property addresses might be a little cumbersome. I don't know. Let's see. It came in pretty easily. Um, okay, so far this looks good. We've got the addresses here, property addresses. Um, we've also got this real estate property code, this RPC code that if you remember was mentioned um, in the, the data uh, when we downloaded it. It's got a lot of other stuff in here, which is unreal. It's just not relevant to me. Um, 
property zip code, street code, okay, owner first name. We don't need any of this stuff, okay? So, okay, that's good to know. Take a look at the housing assessment data. Oh, all of this stuff I think is what came in as that, it was that weird pipe delimited stuff. Notice that what Tableau has done is it's made an educated guess, right? Um, because it knows what delimited data forms look like, it said, oh, this is probably a pipe delimited form. So it registered that and, and separated all of the data, you know, by the pipe. So this is great, actually. We don't have to do a lot of work with that. <laughs> we do just need to figure out um, what we're looking at. So we've got total value, land value. That's what we're interested in, right? Um, the value of the, the specific locations. Improvement value amount. Eh, I don't know. We don't really need that. Let's forget about the assessment date also. So well, here's this real estate property code. I wonder why is, why is that all null? That's sort of odd. Um, that might be a problem because we need to be able to connect this. So this might be a larger problem for us. We've got this assessment key and so on. Okay. All right. So that's what that looks like. That might be a problem for us. Um, here are the assessments from uh, the school information that we got. So school year, school name, this is the SOL, right? The particular SOL that we selected reading. We also have a category, a column for race, gender, whether they're disadvantaged or not, uh, and pass rate. And then we have this like less than 50 thing. I don't really know what that means because it should be a percentage, right? So well, that's kind of interesting. So if we go up here and look at the, the data, um, we might be able to see a little bit more clearly. Okay, yeah, so this looks more like what I would expect, 90% pass rate. Um, among Hispanic students at Abingdon Elementary. Okay, uh, it does, so we also don't have the address for this particular school. Notice it's just got the school name, which will make it really difficult to map. So um, that's something we're gonna have to think about. All right, so those are some of our data sets. Um, I wish that this assessment thing had this real estate property code um, in it. And if that is not, why is it a de date type? Okay, that's odd. Let me, okay, weird. Um, let me look at that because I don't know why this is a date. It really shouldn't be a date. Let me see what happens if I change it. I'm gonna change it to, is it a number maybe? No, uh, should it be, why, what are all of these though? Minus three, four, what is that? Okay, I may, this may or may not be the correct data that I need, okay? Uh, it should have a real estate property code. So, you know, we'll keep our eyes on that. I'm not sure why that's the case there. Um, most of these values are null, and those are the ones that actually have the data about land value and total value. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but we'll see what the rest of our data looks like. So I still need to get in our um, school data information for addresses. So remember that was that weird KMZ file, which I think might be a spatial file. So let's see. Okay, it's this one right here. This, uh, this where is it? Here it is, school locations. Uh, it didn't come in. It's not available for us to select. So there's a problem with this. Okay. All right. So we have a couple of things that we know we're going to need to do. Um, one, we're going to need to uh, uh, get better data from uh, the schools. Okay. And so that we have the addresses there. And we're also going to need to deal with this assessment thing because I, there's no way I can connect this to property addresses because there's nothing, there's nothing, or sorry, the assessment, because there's nothing in common. These two data sets don't have anything in common unless maybe they do, I don't know. So let me get rid of that change type. And first of all, because I wanna go back to the original data that we had. Okay, so now we're back to the original data. So let's see what happens when I try to join this. So I'm gonna join this because remember they are, they're two different sets of data, right? Um, they ought to have at least one thing in common, which will allow me to connect those two tables. So I'm gonna click join. And 
what you'll notice is, um, okay, so something has connected. Interesting. What is this? I don't know what this is. Um, we'll have to, we'll have to check. Oh, look, and the real, oh, okay, that's from the other, okay. So let me tell you what's going on here. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of time. You have to kind of look and, and, uh, and understand what is happening. So when I join these two tables, okay, what I'm going to need to do is figure out how to connect them. I need to identify a join clause. Now, in order to do that, there, have, there has to be a, a column in one table, and a column in the other that are in common, okay? And that will allow me to then say, okay, the assess the total value amount of this property, which is also connected to this, it is located here, okay? Uh, and it should make more sense as we go on, uh, but it looks like Tableau has sort of suggested a, co a combination already because this, notice that this, um, this is the property address on the left here, okay? And that has a lot of columns in it. So I missed when I was initially looking at it, this provolerst, I don't know even know what that is. I'll have to go back to the original data when I'm working on my um, uh, analysis to uh, figure out what exactly this is. Some of them are more clear, like property zip code, obviously that's the zip code for the property, right? Uh, and so on. But um, I didn't notice that when I was looking at it at first, but Tableau has recognized them as being named the same thing which you will often find if you're working with data from say a municipality, um, they try to keep things pretty regular. So they've used the same title here. That won't be the case if you're merging data from multiple sources because they may use different um, naming conventions. All right, so it's connected it for us already. And it's done this, this particular type of join called an inner join. So what it's doing is it's in, it's keeping only the things that are in common okay, between these two different um, data sets. And you'll notice that they are color coded. So this orange one here is this data set here. The blue one is this data set here, the property addresses and the housing assessment. You'll notice that there's the blue one is on the left and the orange one's on the right. So there are other join joins that you can make, okay? Um, you can create uh, a join that takes everything from the housing assessment and only keeps what's common in the uh, property address table. And you'll notice that nothing changed here, okay? It's including almost 3,000, 2,800 um, rows, and it's also keeping all of the rows from the housing assessment. So it's excluding 45,000, which probably means they haven't really been, um, they haven't been improved on, right? Because the orange data set is the assessment of that land. Now, this might make me wonder about the schools, okay, where they are. Um, I don't know if the school addresses are included in this. We'll see. Um, but just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and do what's called a full outer join. And that's going to make sure that everything from this one and that one is, is included in my data set. And it, there has to be a join clause, so there has to be something in common. Right? And you can select. You can say, oh, this, this name is not the same as that name, but I know they're the same thing, so I'm going to set this one equal to that one. And if it doesn't work, it will give you, Tableau Prep will give you a, a kind of notice. Okay? But, um, let me go back and fix that. So this one is equal to that one. And notice that the indicator went away. Okay, so now I've got, um, I've got those joined. And again, I don't know if this is what I want. This is exactly the type of join I want. I don't know if the schools are going to be in here. We'll see. Um, but I also have these assessments. Okay, so let me, these are for the, um, uh, the, the school students and their standards of learning, okay, and how well those different schools did. There's no way I can join this right now because there are no obvious points of connection, right? I can try to make one, right? But you'll notice that these are all different, okay? The content in these columns is totally different from the content in these columns. I have to have at least one thing in common in order to connect them. 
but you'll notice that that won't work because those two columns are not uh, they're not the same okay so i will not be able to make this join yet so i'm going to delete this i'm going to remove that step i have a little bit more work to do remember we also wanted to download the addresses for the schools so let me see if i can do that I'm going to go back up here and um, let's just see what happens if I click, well, no, text file won't work. Um, maybe spatial file because it mm -hmm. is supposed to be a map. Okay, here's the school locations, KMZ file. It's not, a, I'm not able to click it. So it's not registering as, um, it's not registering as a, a spatial file it, by, in Tableau. Even though the kind says over here, it, it indicates that it is, uh, an Earth, Google Earth file, okay? And you can see that if you open these up, right? Google Earth, it's a Google Earth 4 file. Okay, so I'm probably gonna need to get that into a different form. So let's go back to our web site and let's go back to our, our school locations, um, Arlington Public Schools. So I'm gonna go back to our map Okay, and I want to download it again and see if there are other forms that I can use. So I'm going to go download KML again and entire map, keep data up to date with Network Link K only as an export KML instead of KMZ. All right, well, I think KML is, is more user friendly. So let's click KML. I'm going to say OK. All right, and now it is downloading it or at least it says okay so it's saving as a KML file all right so now it's there let's go back to Tableau prep and let's see if we can pull it in I'm going to connect to the spatial file oh there it is a APS schools and programs okay so now I can select it I was hoping it would give me a CSV file um, but it didn't it gave me a KMZ file which Tableau um, prep can't can't read okay so here's our school locations um, I want to view and clean the data and okay it, something is not happy here it's not coming up for some reason so something is not working with this data set as I have imported it so we're gonna need to find another way to do this okay so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that we're gonna come back to this later Okay, what I need to do right now is I need to get all of that data that has the school addresses. I want to go back to the web and see if I can find that information. So let me open up a new window and I want to try Arlington, Virginia school addresses. So here's the site we were on just now. It wasn't letting me download what I wanted. Elementary schools, Arlington schools, school directory, Washington Liberty, interesting, so Washington Liberty, okay, that's a particular school. Arlington Public Schools, school locator by address, I wonder what this is, looks like I've already been there before. Oh, this is in Massachusetts, okay, so we definitely want to not have that one. Excellent. Okay, so we've got this. This might be useful for us. Okay, what we want to do is get this into a um, a spreadsheet. Right now, it might already be in a spreadsheet. So let's copy and paste. Right, I'm going to eliminate preschools just because it's unlikely that they're doing standardized learning in preschools. Um, all right, so I'm going to collect this. I'm going to select it, copy it. And let's open up a spreadsheet. Okay. And I'm going to paste this in, see what happens. Okay, good. It, it's looking not too bad. But you'll notice that in order for this to be mapped, we are going to need the address to be on its own, right? 3035 South Abingdon Street. That's what we need. And maybe the zip code. Okay, we are we know they're all in Arlington. So what are we gonna do with this? Well we need to we're gonna need to clean this data. 
Okay, so uh, there are ways to do this with Tableau Prep, but I think it might actually be a little bit too complicated at this point to do it in um, Tableau Prep. So I am going to do this manually. There's not a lot of data here, so I'm going to do this manually. Take Abby to the elementary. Okay, so now I've got my data about the schools. And this can take a little bit of time. I'm gonna save this as a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna put this in the folder that I created for my dashboard. And I'm gonna call it um, Arlington Schools. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to Tableau Prep, and I'm going to connect to that data, which is an Excel spreadsheet. Arlington Schools, I'm going to open it. All right. It comes in as sheet one because I hadn't named the sheet, so I'm going to rename that now. And I'm going to clean this data. I'm going to view and clean it and see if there's anything I need to do. Okay, I notice that this is a problem. Uh, I came in, I pulled the number in for some reason. So let me go back and fix that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this. I'm going to change that. Edit the value and replace it. Oops, not with that one, but with the... And I'm going to replace it with this. Okay, now I notice that some of this data is unnecessary. What I really want are the zip codes. Okay, So uh, I know everything is in Arlington, so I don't really need to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is fix this column and make it just zip codes. So I'm going to rename it so I know what I'm doing. I'm going to rename the field. Okay, zip code. And I'm going to clean it. I want to split these values. Actually, why don't I just get rid of all letters? I'm going to remove all the letters, which we don't need. Uh, and now I'm going to also clean it by removing the punctuation. And then I am going to remove extra spaces. So now I have the zip code. And now what I'm going to do is change the type to a whole number. Uh, and everything else looks good. Okay, so now I've got this data. Um, I should be able to connect it by zip code or by address. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what, what works. This has lots of punctuation in here. I'm not sure how that's going to, you know, how that's going to work um, with our addresses here in property ad, uh, address. Let's just double check. Property address, street name, number, text. Okay, so it's all in caps and it doesn't have any punctuation. Okay, so let's go back here and let's change the address. Let's clean the address and we want to make it all uppercase and we want to remove the punctuation. Let's see, clean, remove, punctuation. Okay, so it's getting a little bit better. This street and street, notice how these are not the same. Um, that's going to be a problem. So uh, we may need to do something else with that. Um, but let's see what's happening so far. I'm going to try to connect this to our property addresses. Let's just see what happens if I join this. All right, it came in as owner zip code, which we don't want. Um, so let's pull it in as not owner zip code, but property zip code. Okay, it looks like it got all of them, which is great. Okay, uh, so that's fabulous for us. Um, we have them by zip code. I wonder if we can get them by, um, 
specify address as well. So uh, let's let's take a peek at that. Um, so it needs to be exact, okay? For the time being, let's just use the zip code, okay? That That's good enough for the time being, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the join and I'm going to join not by address, okay? But by zip code. Property zip code and zip code. And that gets everything, okay? So we definitely want that. And uh, okay, so now I've got that it's joined. Um, let me remove this. I'm gonna redo it later, okay? Because I wanna connect all of these together. So I'm gonna right click and remove this and I wanna take the housing assessment and join them here. And we've got the land information that connects it on, so that's good. Let's see if we're missing any. We're missing a few from the housing, but uh, we've got all from this purple one, which is important. Um, that's the one with the Arlington schools. Okay, so good. Now let's see about the assessments. Is there anything we need to do with this? How is this gonna work? Um, These are for the uh, assessments for um, testing. Okay, so now we've got to check this out. Everything so far is excluded. All right, so we're gonna need to, to fix this. Um, this is not coming in correctly. School type and school year, clearly not the same thing. All right, so let's add a join clause and see if we can figure this out. We're going to need, um, this has address in it. And let's see, assessments, disadvantage, school name maybe? Um, Let's see, school, I okay, so school and school name should be the same. Okay, it's missing some of these, I'm not sure why. Um, so we may wanna go back and look at that. Okay. It's getting a few more as it goes through here. But it's only it's only got these. So Arlington Mill High, Arlington Science Focus, it's not getting. This is a big file. We do not need all of this stuff, I'm pretty sure. There's gotta be a better way to do this. Okay, it's working, it's working, it's working. It's getting some. Um, all right. So it's, it's excluded uh, quite a few um, things here. So oh, that did not work. And that's exactly what happens when you are gathering and cleaning data for yourself. You often have to do workarounds. So it's clear to me that um, the property addresses that I found don't really sync up well to our school list. So why don't we do zip codes instead, okay? It'll make it a little bit simpler. So instead of doing property addresses, okay, we uh, may wanna do zip codes, um, but we'll still need this data in here for the time being because uh, it's got the zip codes in there and the property addresses in there. Um, and it's also, that's how the assessments are connected. Okay, so uh, let us, see what else we can do, okay? So this join is not, not making us happy. So let's remove that. These are the assessments, uh, the test score assessments. I'm gonna change the title of this so that it makes it more clear. Okay. And uh, what I wanna do is find a geographic file that has zip code boundaries for Arlington. So let's go back online. And I went back uh, to Arlington Open Data. And uh, I searched for zip codes, okay? And this came up, zip code boundary, a resource that's been identified as having Arlington specific information. Okay, and this is a link to an external data set. I'm gonna click it. It's gonna take me to ArcGIS. It's, a, it's the, the GIS site for Arlington's open data. 
um, materials and I want to view the map. Okay, so this has the zip codes and they're linked to a map. So this looks good. Okay, um, I can view the record data, the data table. It's not going to let me see it right now, but, um, but that's okay. Uh, I want to download this. So I'm going to click download and oh look oh, CSV file that's great a KML file as well a shape file shape files are really useful notice how small it is I'm going to do a shape file uh, and I know that Tableau can use them so I'm going to download this and I can do this previously generated thing it'll be a little quicker uh, zip code polygons in dashboard data okay I'm going to save that saving it as a zip file so let's go back to our prep and let's import this. I'm going to connect to a spatial file and notice that it pops up here. It's a zip file, but it's, uh, but it, it recognizes it. Okay. So, um, here we've got zip code polygons. It's definitely pulled that in. We've got object ID, the zip code, which is really wonderful. That's what we're looking for. And we've got the polygon. Okay, so this is kind of what we were, I was expecting to get in that other map, but that did not happen. So, um, so why don't we view and clean this? Okay, good. So we wanna keep all this stuff. So let's take this now and connect it to our So we need the zip code and we want the property zip code. We'll try to clean step here. So eventually we'll be able to see everything. Okay, so it looks like it's working. It's gonna take some time because now we've got an enormous data set, okay? Um, but it's looking like it's working. So I'm going to take a look at our cleaned data set. And we have 52 field columns, okay? That's a lot. We don't need that much. And we still haven't put the, the test information in here. Okay, so let's clean this first and let's see where we are. Probably should have been doing this sort of on the on on route. Um, and we'll keep the rest of these. Okay, so I want to remove the fields that I've selected. That's a little bit better. Now we have 17 fields and it may be still that we don't need all of these. Okay. Do we need to get rid of anything else? Total value, school, address. Okay, it's looking good so far. Um, now we've got our standardized learning test scores. Right, so uh, let's take a look at this and remind ourselves what's going on. So we've got the school name, which is gonna be probably pretty important. And that is what we're most likely going to have to um, join on, okay? So, Let's add this to this. And I don't want to keep school type and school year. What I want to join on is school name and school name. It does look like some of them are not in here, which I'm not sure why that's the case. Escuela, Innovation Elementary, Oh, maybe they've, maybe they've, it doesn't say there are any excluded right now. So, but there are some excluded from this one, but let's see, it only looks like there are these two excluded. Okay. So at this point, I'm okay with excluding these schools. They don't match anything else. So I'm going to get rid of them. All right. Um, so now we've got our last join. I'm going to clean this and view it. Okay. Now we should have everything we need in order to do our project. Okay. That took a while, <laughs> didn't it? Um, but we got there, okay? There's no um, reason to, to worry that this takes a while, okay? It does. I want to take a quick look at um, our final data uh, set before we export it, because I, 
saw something that I think was going to be a bit of a problem. Um, we've got uh, these pass rates. Some of them are not numbers. Notice how the type is a string. That's because of these um, less than 50 and greater than 50. Uh, I'm not sure what these are, um, but I'm a little worried about them. I'm not sure what they mean. Uh, so what I would probably want to do is to go back to that um, Virginia Department of Ed website and double check what they mean, okay? But, you know, for the time being, um, I, I won't be able to graph these either way because I, there, there's no number sort of associated with them. So I am going to delete these. I'm going to take these two and I'm going to exclude them from our data. Okay, so now we, only, we should only have numbers in here. I'm going to change the data type to a decimal. Okay. Uh, yeah, to a decimal. And um, that should be okay. We've also got the same issue with the school year, right? The multi-year thing. This is the academic year, 2015-16. Um, but we, I don't really have plans to do anything with a timeline right now, um, so I'm okay with with leaving it like this. Let's just go back and check our our data types. We've got a string. This is our subject. We don't really need this, but you know it's helpful to have. Um, uh, let's see, race. We've got that. Gender, disadvantage, test source. That's fine too. Um, we don't really need that. Pass rate. And this is the stuff that connects it, that connects those data sets. So I'm, I kept that, even though I don't think we need it. Uh, we've got the property um, address, okay, and we've got the property zip code, uh, latitude, longitude, which we may or may not need, okay. Um, and then we've got data about the housing of value. We've got the school information, and address, and zip code, school type. Zip code should really be the same, but you know, we'll, we'll see what it looks like when we get there. Um, okay, and then we've got the zip code, the zip codes and, again, and the geometry. Okay, so um, there is some still, there's still some redundancy in this, but but this is okay for me for right now. Okay, so let's create our output um, flow. So this is what we're going to be saving. Now, uh, Tableau Prep, when you're working with uh, geographic data, you can only extract it to um, you can only extract it to a hyper file. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out where we're going to put it. Uh, it wants me to put it in data sources. You can do that. Um, I'm going to put it into my folder just so I know where it where it is. Uh, let's see, desktop, dashboard data, and I want to give it a name. That's something I can remember. This is my Arlington project, okay. and I'm going to accept that. It wants me to save it in those other places, but I'm going to ignore that. And this looks good. Okay, and now I'm going to run that flow. So it's going to take a little bit of time to package everything up. 